Um, African Day for me is the celebration of my rich and proud cultural heritage. Our culture, uh, the culture of a people, is the way of life of a people. It is who we are. Your culture is your DNA. And as Africans, our culture is what differentiates us from everybody on the surface of the earth. So having an African Day celebration, I celebrate Africa every day in everything I do. So having a specific day is just is a plus for me and it's an opportunity for us as Africans to look inwards and see how we can make our continent better for everyone and also for the world at large to appreciate us as, as, as a people, as a race, as a force um, on the universe and um, to celebrate our uniqueness. All right, but when you look at um, how it, how young people, because when because um, I want you to respond to being African in the twenty first century, looking at how we are passing this culture, this mm. force you've been talking about, yes. you know, into the next generation, would you say we're we're losing a bit of our culture? We are fast losing a bit of our culture, and there are very few of us brands like myself pushing for this. Um, we we need to uh, reintegrate. Uh, the youths of today. We need to um, look for ways to make our culture attractive to them. In that, um, the, the youths, there's a disconnect. There is a total disconnect. So we need to bridge the cultural gap. And I know f uh, as a cultural activist, as a cultural brand, that this will go a long way in solving a lot of issues we have in our society today. We really, really need to go back to our culture and hold it firmly and adhere to it. Maybe not strictly, mm -hmm. because there are certain aspects that we might not be able to practice today, being the 21st century. But I tell you that if we, if, if we go back to it, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, first, our traditional rulers. We need, to, uh, we need the inclusion of the traditional institution in the face of the day. The government needs to work closely with them, because those are the people that the youths in, I mean, they, they, are, they are the first place of call and contact for the people in the rural areas. And the youths, we'll talk about those in the, in the rural areas, I mean the urban areas, but we're talking about those in the rural areas also come out there to the urban areas. We need to, because we respect our traditional rulers, and uh, we do respect to His Imperial Majesty the only of Ife. He's doing quite a lot in that light, and he's brought what the today youth can identify with, let's say, some swag to this whole thing without losing its significance and importance in as, a, as a traditional. All right, now, still, as you mentioned, as you brought up the leadership, I'll still keep up on the leadership. When you yes. look at Africa now, let's move beyond the, the traditional rulers now, and let's look at African leaders, you know, at the sovereign level, yes. at the national level, and yes. then let's look at, you know, there are many causes and many issues that are still prevalent on the continent. Yes. For you, though, which of these causes would you say is one that very most important one that you know African leaders should focus on. Engage the youth, emp um, empowerment, employment. Keep the youths busy. There is so much out there. I will speak. Let me speak about Nigeria, for instance. Uh, we are we are blessed. We have the tourism potentials of Nigeria is huge, is among us. And I will say that yes, the government is doing a lot. The private sector is doing a lot. But we're actually just crashing the surface. That sector alone will create employment for the youths. Engage them. And um, it's also, has, it works hand in hand with the entertainment. You see a lot of youths gravitating towards entertainment. Everybody wants to be a superstar. Everybody wants to be on TV. There's so much that we can do in that regard. Our leaders need to engage the youth. They need to empower them. Employment. For you, you chose uh, in uh, entertainment. You chose the entertainment as your own place, and you I see you uh, talking. You play the truck talking drum. Yes. From the Yoruba culture, that usually is a, an instrument that's made for men. Yes. How did you get into that? Thank you. Um, I am the first female talking drummer, the, uh, the pioneer. Um, I come from a lineage of kings, so it's genetic for me. And I dare to say that the talking drum chose me. My, birth, my official picture of the third day I was born, in that picture, my hand was like I was carrying the talking drum. And I believe that I have been sent to do this, to bring the message of a talking drum. If you know the talking drum was a means of communication in the days of old, and it was a soul preserve of men until it became a musical instrument. Ara Lola Lamuiwa, Ara, that's myself, is the first. And I was able to break a major traditional jinx. And I tell you, the, by doing this, we have a lot of female talking drummers out there today. And by taking this instrument on the world stage, 
as a female because there are men before me who had done that. Um, it has created a large and huge market for the talking drum and the iron family. So for me, um, a, a, my talking drum is a very unique instrument and it's spiritual as well. All right, now, to, now let's go to the African woman because I also want to look at, at, at because I'm using you as that point of contact to talk to, to speak around the African women. And okay. I'd I like to ask, you know, um, when you look at how the, the issues facing Afri the African women in, in Africa today, issues facing women in Africa today, do you, do you think that we have, we have scratched the surface in liberating the African women and making, making the African woman take a rightful place in society? Uh, we have taken some bold steps as a country, as a continent. Uh, but I, I must say first, we are a people of culture. Our culture in no way limits women any more than the woman wants to be limited herself. If I had looked at the talking drum being the sole preserve of men and stayed behind, I, prob I would not be the first female talking drummer in the world today. So this is a, a, a shout out to women out there, your gender is no barrier. The men want us to take our rightful position, but we must do it the right way. There is no thing stopping you as a woman. Your gender does not stop you from attaining any height in life. You can do it. And our society is ready. Our culture supports it. If you look at Queen Amina, if you look at Morimi, if you look at a lot of these people in history, they did quite a lot for our race for our tribes. Uh, so as a woman, it's, no, it's, no, it's not an excuse. Your gender is not an excuse to achieving anything in life. Go for it. All right, but finally now, if you have a message for Africa that you want to share, share, to, share to, to Africans, mm. you know, on how, um, for this year, what mm. would it be? It is for our leaders to please implode, look inwards, take care of the people, create the basics, the facilities, the infrastructures that would develop the people, the youths, our education, and then give prominence to our culture, give prominence to our traditional leaders, because through them, a lot can be achieved. Walk hand in hand with them, a lot. Respect them, respect the culture, respect the tradition. If you lose your culture, you lose everything. Your culture is your DNA. You cannot run away from your DNA. So that is my message to the African leader. So you use your pen for me. Okay.